This is Dr. Tom Bernanke, and today I'm talking about HMB supplementations, the pros, the cons. This study is in 2024. We're going over all of it. Is this thing worth taking? There's a ton of bodybuilders taking it. It's recommended for older people losing body mass. It's recommended for people undergoing cancer treatment to prevent muscle mass loss. If you're a bodybuilder, I'm not a bodybuilder, but I do work out a little bit. We're going to go over, does this stuff work? Does it do anything? What do the studies show? We're starting now. Some studies actually show that HMB and creatinine together are more effective than steroids or testosterone. Don't worry, you're not going to be like a gigantic bodybuilder like this guy, where the real benefits are long life and enjoying your golden years, being physically fit and enjoying your life. HMB is also known as beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate. That's a mouthful. So once again, beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate is a compound that's derived from the amino acid leucine. This is a critical component in the synthesis of protein and muscle building. The theory is taking it prevents muscle breakdown. It's often used by athletes, bodybuilders, and individuals looking to enhance their muscle mass. So me, I gotta stay in good shape. I got four kids, I gotta pick them up all the time. I gotta make sure my back's not getting thrown out as I'm bending and picking these kids up. I, I even got a little baby on the way too. I'm in trouble, I gotta find something to get myself in good shape, to enhance my muscle mass, my strength, and my endurance to get through the day, and to be able to help make these videos for people here. So if you appreciate that, give me a like, give me a thumbs up in the comment, share it with all your friends. I got a lot of kids and a wife to take care of. This is an excellent study that looked at almost 50,000 people and measured their grip strength, which is a great indicator for your overall muscle strength. So that's how hard you grip, essentially, on a grip strength device. But look at as you get past your 40s over to your 60s at your 60s you basically start to go over the cliff it's even worse for women so as you get older and as you get over 65 your bone mass your muscle mass go down and one of the big secrets is if you can maintain your muscle mass and keep functional it keeps everything going it keeps your metabolism your bone strength going you're not going to become a bodybuilder most likely if you're watching this video, but you will potentially have a greater chance of being more athletic, more fit, less nerve pain, less joint pain when you hit your later golden years. And that's the goal of this video. Here is where it gets even more exciting. They've determined that there is no change in metabolism if your muscle mass stays the same. That's insane to me. Your metabolic rate is predicted largely by your fat-free mass. So if you can keep your muscle up, theoretically your metabolism should stay up into your 80s, 90s. If you can maintain that muscle mass, which is the goal with creatine and HMB, there is more and more likelihood that you can enjoy those last decades of your life. I want to go over the side effects of HMB. Why wouldn't you take it? HMB is generally considered safe. It is safe at the recommended dose of three grams per day. However, like any supplement, anything could happen. You could be allergic to anything. Anything could be contaminated. Don't take this as medical advice. The known side effects are actually known to be very minor and rare, but like usual, GI issues, muscle cramps, potential interactions with other stuff you're taking. So if you're on a lot of medications, be careful, experiment with smaller amounts before moving to larger amounts is usually a good option. I looked over all the studies, and in fact, I have a new video about the studies going over these in detail, link down below. But on average, taking three grams, there is very little risk. The biggest issues are gastrointestinal issues like muscle cramps, aches, potentially diarrhea, but that's not most people. And there's always risks of allergies or interactions with other medications, but long-term liver and kidney problems were not really noticed, but there's always longer term studies needed for everything. A lot of studies combine creatine and the HMB in muscle performance. So specifically bodybuilders, this is a popular combination, creatine and HMB. The HMB specifically can aid in muscle recovery 
and theoretically reduce muscle breakdown, potentially creating a synergistic effect. Some of these studies looked at both creatine and HMB. Now the trick is creatine is possibly the most studied supplement on the face of the planet. It's been studied for years and years. It's shown to really help with muscle strengthening, recovery, energy. Potentially some of these benefits are more from creatine. I looked at one study that looked at people taking creatine, taking HMB, taking both together, or taking nothing at all in a control group. And the group that took both of them actually had the best results, but the creatine itself was a little bit better than the HMB. So creatine is reserved for big, fit guys. So check out these pipes right here. I'm gonna try and do some post edit work in the editor. So video editor, I'm gonna give you a bonus for this one. If you can make my bicep a little bit bigger so I can match some of these bodybuilders. Creatine is a naturally occurring compound found in small amounts in certain foods and it is synthesized by our bodies. So this is something that is naturally in our bodies. Most people don't know this, but creatine is actually naturally occurring in our bodies. And our body creates new creatine every day and it processes creatine every day. This is very similar to things like vitamin D. It's something that our body can create but it probably doesn't do it in values high enough. So as a result, by not having enough of it available, we suffer some consequences. So with vitamin D, for example, there's a lot of benefits like immune benefits, like depression, but creatine, it's found in our muscles and gives our muscles more energy and less fatigue. You're not taking some synthetic chemical and putting it into our bodies, but it is made in the liver, in the kidneys, in the pancreas, but it's also known as a popular dietary supplement known for its benefits. Historically, it's been known for athletic performance, muscle strength, and muscle mass. When I started creatine, I could noticeably feel the difference. Like immediately my bench press numbers, my squat numbers, went up a little bit. Even though I'm a number of one, it's definitely helping me in these areas and I feel really good about it. Creatine plays a crucial role in the production of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the primary energy currency of our cells. It helps rapid energy during short bursts of intense physical activity making it particularly important in weightlifting, sprinting, and high intensity training. But listen, if you're an older person with nerve disease, with weak joints, soreness everywhere, it's gonna help you with those trips off the couch, moving to the bathroom, going around your house. It will give you that extra burst of energy. And I'm telling you, I feel it when I strength train, but some of you guys who are having a hard time getting your biomechanics going, getting up standing, leg pain, it can help with that as well. The results with creatine can be fairly quick and it can actually be measured on the blood levels. So what's recommended is a loading phase. And when you perform a loading phase within about one week, you can actually see your body weight go up, your muscle strength go up and potentially your energy levels in the gym. So when you're doing a bench press, or when you're doing squats, you can see your energy level go up. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence is on Instagram, on TikTok, a lot of people try and oversell the benefits, but the studies are actually pretty good. Taking it for a six day loading period, you can see the levels go up from about 120 to about 145 or so. So that's a decent chunk of weight. I think for me, like 10 pounds or more of water weight and muscle mass, you can feel it immediately. And when I stop taking it, my weight drops comprehensively. But don't worry, you're actually stronger and you feel better. What are the best food sources for creatine? Creatine is naturally found in small amounts in foods such as red meat and fish. So to get your recommended one, two grams of creatine per day, you probably need to eat about two pounds of red meat. It's hard to get in your diet. You'd have to eat a lot of meat, a lot of fish. It can be done, but supplementing is relatively safe and much cheaper. The carnivore diet is very popular now, and a lot of these guys are showing off how buff they are, including Dr. Sean Baker. He was just on the Joe Rogan show. He is a big dude. He's in phenomenal shape. You can't argue with those results. But look at the top six foods of creatine are chicken, salmon, cod, tuna, steak, and pork. Creatine is found in meats and that finds its way into your muscles and gives you that kick and that muscle swell. Just like our body makes creatine, the amino acid leucine is converted to HMB in the liver. This happens at a rate of approximately 5%. But you can see these are the foods that have leucine. The problem is 
it's only converted at a rate of approximately 5%. So to get the levels of HMB that we need, we would have to eat a lot of meat, which is certainly possible, but this is where a supplement can come in and really make a big difference. Gaining muscle mass later in life is extremely important. I would say probably the single most important thing towards a long, healthy life that I see in my patients. Take a look at Dr. Sean Baker. He pushes the carnivore diet. In fact, he's probably the biggest guy. And he shows a lot of great studies. I've spoken to him, but countries that have more meat eating and higher per capita, such as Hong Kong, for example, which has the longest lifespan, eat the most meat. Now, I'm not saying you should only eat meat, but there's a lot of benefits like getting leucine, HMB, creatine. And this is pretty conclusively shown. Countries that can afford and can eat more meat generally overall have a longer lifespan. For example, India, which is the highest rates of veganism in the world, tend to have some of the most heart attacks in the world and cardiovascular issues. Creatine supplementation. Creatine supplementation involves taking creatine in concentrated forms, such as creatine monohydrate, to increase the body's creatine stores. So essentially, in your biceps here, what happens is, when I start curling or bench pressing, my ATP gets used up. Creatine holds more ATP and transfers it to your muscles real time without your body having to regenerate it. Creatine monohydrate is one of the most extensively studied and supported supplements in sports nutrition. Creatine supplementation is essentially like a backup. When your star player gets hurt, the backup is ready to jump into the game. Thus, you can put in more reps, you can supplement it, and you can take more to a reasonable extent. The pros and benefits of HMB are increased muscle mass and strength. And this was most important in individuals starting a brand new resistance training program. You know when you first start doing the bench press or squats, you're so sore the next day, this helps with that a little bit. It reduces muscle breakdown. It's known as an anti-catabolic agent. Catabolic means you're breaking muscles down. Anabolic means you're building it up. Taking in protein, eating good food, that's more of an anabolic effect. HMB prevents the breakdown. It's like anti-catabolic effect. It's very beneficial in people undergoing fasting, cancer therapies, for example. If you're undergoing severe physical stress, like having to work 16-hour shifts at a factory, lifting heavy stuff, that could do it. HMB may also improve recovery times by reducing muscle damage following prolonged or intense exercise. It's shown to particularly be effective for older adults. As we get into 70s and 80s, our muscle mass kind of goes over a cliff. In another video I did, I talked about brain mass as well, but once you get into your 70s, your 80s, and 90s, your brain mass decreases, your bone mass decreases, your muscle mass decreases. It's kind of depressing. If you're concerned about those other ones, I have a brain guide, especially magnesium three and eight, the latest studies. I have an osteoporosis guide, including all the new supplements and studies as of 2024. And I have a video now talking about HMB. So that's for your muscle breakdown. This is such an important chart. As time goes on, we're initially young, we're healthy throughout our adult life, but our muscle mass starts to decrease. If we can keep it up, we will live our golden years strong and healthy. If our muscle mass decreases, our bone mass decreases, we go into the high risk zone. That bottom C line is essentially rehab where you have to strengthen and boost yourself up, but why not just prep for the future? Take your HMB, creatine, and stay strong ahead of time. So taking both HMB and creatine, this drop off at about age 60, where our muscle mass starts to rapidly decline, we can prevent this ideally by strength training, by eating properly, the amount of protein, the amount of HMB, the creatine, studies all show this helps. And the beauty is that as we do this, it maintains our metabolism. So we're burning more calories, we're building less fat, and we're more active. It just continues to work better and better, and this is how we enjoy our golden years. There was another study in 2020 that just got completed recently, but creatine and HMB. At 10 weeks of taking three grams of HMB and five grams of creatine, the patients were tested on a rowing machine. They had more strength and endurance, and it's said that a rowing machine works like 80% of your muscles or so. It's both a test of muscle strength and endurance. Now, we're talking about older people here. We're not talking about like a 20-year-old in the prime of their life. We're talking about people that get fatigued, that get tired. They had better results with creatine and HMB rather than just creatine or HMB separately. 
When it came to strength training, the people at 10 weeks did not have a significant improvement in strength. For example, like doing bench press or squats, the numbers did not change significantly between the group. They were much stronger in both endurance and the rowing. I would bet a lot of that is from the creatine. The thing we know is probably not a great study because HMB is more effective in muscle breakdown. It's not really said what the people did in the meantime besides just taking this supplement. So you're not going to get quite this effect so soon, but as time goes on, if you're taking your continuous creatine and you're taking your continuous HMB, you will retain and build some more muscle mass than you would have otherwise. This is known as sarcopenia and HMB is shown to help with that, especially cancer patients, older patients, patients who took HMB, they could stand longer and they had less fall risk potentially, but these weren't great high level studies. There actually is a great study, a blinded randomized study with a large number of people, a few hundred people, but that test is not over. It just started in 2019. It just shows how long a lot of these studies take. I'm very interested to see the results of that HMB study. There was another study in 2022 for cancer treatment. Muscle loss is called sarcopenia and people undergoing cancer treatments experience sarcopenia. The patients in this study were supplemented with protein and HMB. So this was a meta-analysis. It looked at five studies and three out of the five studies showed clear benefit towards taking protein and HMB. Two out of the five did not show any significant benefit. They took three gram doses of HMB. They took about five grams of creatine and they measured muscle breakdown products. Essentially, the people who did not take the HMB had slightly more muscle breakdown products, and they measured something called creatine kinase. This study referenced the survival rates for high muscle mass and low muscle mass. So if you have sarcopenia, which is muscle loss, there is almost a 50% chance greater chance that you will have serious complications or potentially even death during your cancer treatment. Now here's the downsides, the side effects, the cons. There are limited benefits for experienced athletes. If you're already a pro, if you're a professional athlete, or you're lifting weights, it didn't show as much results in studies. It's more for newer people, it's more for older people. It has potential, it can be costly. How much supplements do you really wanna take? HMB is not the cheapest thing, and the lack of long-term studies. HMB is not studied long-term like say something like creatine, which has been studied for decades. Here's the recommendations. The dosage is three grams per day, often divided into multiple doses. Three grams per day is what you want. The timing, it's recommended to take HMB close to your workout, although optimal timing is not really determined in a lot of these studies. The duration is, it's typically used for weeks to months on end. It's not really studied long-term though, so nobody really knows the answer. Is it safe for years? Who knows? It probably is because leucine is an amino acid, but you never know unless you actually do the studies. The combination of HMB with protein powders and creatine has been shown to be the way to go. If you're strength training, if you're older, if you're doing resistance training, if you're undergoing cancer therapy, best results were found with a protein isolate, HMB, and creatine. So the three of those together, I go over all three of those separately and I link some of my favorites. I personally like the brand NutraCost. It's pretty low cost. They double check the quality and the ingredients from a third party source. That's a good option I go with. I buy a lot of mine that way. I put my links down below. So how do I use it? Realistically, I have HMB. I forget to take it a lot of the times. Right now, I am strength training pretty heavily. I'm up to like 230 pounds. So hopefully I'm not getting too big, but I am putting on a lot of muscle mass. I am gaining a lot of strength. I'm not in my cutting phase yet. I'm not a professional athlete. I've got a ton of kids. I work crazy hours as a doctor, but I can tell using creatine, especially has made a big difference for me. Using pre-workouts has made a big difference for me. HMB, I can't really say. The creatine, definitely, as soon as I started taking it, huge results for me. I put on a lot of mass immediately, and I could feel my strength go up. I don't really feel that with HMB, but the studies are pretty good. If you're an older adult, if you're going through cancer therapy, if you have weakness, you can't get up, you can't walk, HMB might be something worth trying. Another study looked at HMB and vitamin D3 as a combo. They had pretty good results. Check out my video on vitamin D3 deficiencies. That's an important one to look at as well. But here's really the big secret. Supplements are not always the answer. In order, strength training, cardio, sleep, 
diet, and then supplements. So supplements is my number five on that list. I work with a doctor of physical therapy, our division one athlete. We put a great course together, a 30 day course to transform your health. Check that out below.